Hi everyone. So this is for my evening for certificate class, Compact FCE. Hi everyone, I hope you're okay and you're not too stressed with the lockdown. Alright, now I know that last week I sent you an email with a complete exam to do for first certificate. If you don't have time to do it at the moment, no worries, no problem. Okay, when you do have some time, sit down and do it under exam conditions. So for each part, do it in the time that you have for the exam. And when you finish, email me your answers and I'll correct them. Okay? But as I said, if you don't have time to do it this week or next week, no problem. It doesn't matter. You can do it any time you like. All right? Today we're actually going to continue with the book. So we're starting Unit 8. All right? And Unit 8 is actually all about science and technology, which is pretty interesting considering we're doing this class through technology. Now we can't physically be in the academy. Quite incredible. So let's start with page 64. All right. Now on page 64, you have here six examples of ways to communicate. And in the box is the vocabulary for each one. So fairly simple, I'm going to give you 20 seconds to match the vocabulary with the correct way of communicating. Okay, 20 seconds, now. Okay, how did you do then? So, number one, really obvious, is emailing. Number two, blogging. Now remember, blogging is a little bit like writing a diary, but instead of it being personal for you, it's public for everybody to read. Number three is instant messaging. Number four, texting. Number five, social networking. And number six, video conferencing. All right. Now, for each of these ways of communicating, which ones do you think are becoming more popular now? Which ones are becoming less popular? What do you think? For emailing, has it become more popular or less popular? Do you think it depends whether it's a work or a personal situation? For example, people still use a lot of emails for work, but in personal situations, do we still email as much? Probably not. Blogging, number two, has become a lot more popular. What's the next stage up from blogging? Vlogging, good, with a video rather than just writing. Number three then, instant messaging. Instant messaging was really popular when I was a teenager. Now, I don't think it's something that people use very often. Texting? Well, maybe not texting through phone messenger, but texting through things like WhatsApp is definitely more popular now than ever. Yes? Do you know anybody who doesn't have WhatsApp? No. I know one person, and that's will the boss no whatsapp can you believe it um number five then social networking pretty popular now isn't it becoming more and more popular and there's so many different platforms that we can use now facebook for the oldies like me nowadays instagram twitter and things like that and finally number six video conferencing for work is that a popular way of communicating? Yes, especially nowadays when we're trying to think of the environment. If we can have a meeting online, that's much better than everybody travelling to one place. I wish governments would do more of it. <laughs> can you think of any other ways that we use to communicate? I'll give you a clue. This is one. <laughs> yeah? So here, I'm using YouTube and 
videos to be able to communicate your lesson to you. Incredible. What about a usual phone call? I know we don't use it that often anymore, but phone calls are still a way of communicating. There's also Skype and Zoom and other ways that we can use to communicate with people. Okay. So now let's have a little bit of vocabulary about technology. All right. Now I have here a board with computer and mobile. And in exercise two, you'll see here two sets of nouns. All right. So we need to use these words to form compound nouns. What's a compound noun, do you say? Well, a compound noun is when we take two words, we put them together, and it makes a new word. Okay, for example, laptop, webcam. Okay, so compound nouns, two words that we put together to form a new word. So if you take the words in A, can you match them to the words in B? to make compound nouns. Then when you finish, can you decide whether they refer to the computer, a mobile phone, or can they be for both? All right. So this is the point where you need to pause the video, do the exercise, and when you finish, press play again, and we'll go through the answers. Okay? So, pause now, and then we'll go through when you've finished. Okay? Good luck. Right, how did you do? Shall we go through then? Let's get my board. And we'll start with the first one, which is book. The compound noun is bookmark. And does that refer to the computer or mobile? Good, it could be both. Okay, we can bookmark things on our computer and on our mobile if we want to look at them later. The next one then is broad. And this one is broadband. Computer or mobile? Computer, good. Now, I live in the countryside. I don't have broadband. What a shame. The next one then is data base. Now, is that computer or mobile? Good, usually on a computer. If you have the correct application on your mobile, it's possible, but it's not usual. It's usually about computers. The next one then is desk. Yes, desk top. And that's part of computers. Remember the desktop is the screen you see when you first turn on your computer, okay? The next one then is handset. Now handset is for your mobile and it's the part which you hold in your hand when you make a phone call. Nowadays for a mobile phone, it's all of the phone. But in the past, when we had the part with the numbers and the part that you picked up, this part was the handset. Next then is keyboard. Good, the keyboard goes with computer. The keyboard is the part of the computer or laptop which you use to type. It has the letters and the numbers. With a mobile, you do get a keyboard that comes up on screen but not a physical keyboard to play with. The next one then is password. 
good password is in the middle. You can use a password for some computers and you can use a password for your mobile. Excellent. The next one then is ringtone. Of course, it's for your mobile. The ringtone is the music which plays when somebody phones you. Okay, do you have a good ringtone or not? In the past, my ringtone was something I actually recorded. My husband snores really loudly when he's sleeping, but he didn't believe me. So I recorded him and used it as my ringtone for about six months. Bad wife. <laughs> okay, the next one then is spread sheet. And again, that one is with computer. Okay, now spreadsheet and database could be quite similar. Quite often you have a database made on a spreadsheet. Okay, so the database is all the information. The spreadsheet is how you organize the information. And finally, web site. And a website can be both. To go onto a website or a web page, we can use our mobiles on the internet and we can use our computers on the internet. Okay, fairly simple? Good. So, can you think of any changes that the internet has made to our lives? Some positive changes and some negative changes. For example, a positive change is the way we can communicate with people. I can do a class from my kitchen. It's incredible. But what about a negative? Sometimes the internet can be quite intrusive. I need to check my phone. Things are happening all the time. I need all the information. What do you think? Can you think of some positives and some negatives? Okay, so let's move on now and have a look at some reading. All right, so on page 65, have a look at the title of the text. The title is, has the internet brought us together or driven us apart? Hmm, what do you think? Has the internet brought us together or driven us apart? Well, I'm going to give you now 90 seconds to quickly read the text. Ignore the vocabulary you don't understand. This is just reading for gist. Okay? So, 90 seconds to read the text and find out what the writer believes is the answer to this question. So, does the writer believe that the internet has brought us together or driven us apart? Okay? 90 seconds, now.
Okay, that's your 90 seconds. Sorry, did I scare you? <laughs> okay, so what did you think? What does the writer think? Has the internet brought us together or driven us apart? Good, yeah, he thinks it's brought us together. Exactly, and how lonely we would be if it wasn't there. Okay, so now look at the quick steps to reading on page 64. Okay. So first of all, to answer a question about the meaning of a word or phrase, look for an explanation in the text or for words with a similar or opposite meaning. Okay. The second, for questions like, what does this refer to? Study everything before and after the reference word in that part of the text. And finally, if a question says the writer's purpose is to show something is true, make sure you look for an example to support the answer. Okay, so now what I'd like you to do, let me get my cloth and get rid of this. All right, now I'd like you to look at the six exam questions. Not the options, only the questions. And for each question, is it asking you to A, find the meaning of a phrase? Is it B, asking you to find the meaning of a reference word? Okay. Or C, is it asking for an example of something? So for the six questions, A, B or C, meaning of a phrase, meaning of a reference word, or looking for an example of something. Again, pause the video and when you've finished, press play and I'll give you the answers. No cheating, you need to pause and do the exercise first. I'm watching you. Okay? Go. Right, what did you think then? So let's look at the questions. In number one, the writer mentions talking to his nephew to show how much... Good, we're looking for an example which shows us why or how much the talking to the nephew changes something. Number two then, what is the writer's attitude to free online news and music? Again, it's looking for an example to help you find the right answer. Number three, what does it in line 29 refer to? This is the meaning of a reference word and the reference word is it. Number four, the writer uses the expression digital migrants in lines 32 to 33 to mean people who, and this one is the meaning of a phrase. Number five, why, according to the writer, can an email anger people so easily? Again, we're looking for an example of how people get angry. Uh, and number six then, what point is the writer making in the final paragraph? Here you're going to need an example to support the reason. Okay, fairly simple. Good. Now, look quickly at the exam tip. Use only the information in the text to choose your answers, not your own knowledge or opinions. For example, in exercise, uh, in question four, the writer uses the expression dig digital migrants. Oh, I know what that means, yes. Be careful, because if it's not in the text, it's not the correct answer. This is not a test of your knowledge. It's a test of your reading. Okay, fairly simple. Right, so now I'd like you to do the exam task. All right. Now for this part, Lots of people find it easier to read only the question, look at the text to find the answer, 
and then decide which of the options best fits the answer that you thought. It doesn't matter how you do this, that's one option. When you find the perfect way that works for you, that's what you should do. Okay? So again, hit pause, do this exam task, and when you've finished, press play and I'll give you the answers. Don't cheat, press pause now. Okay? Right, how did you do? Let's go through the answers for this text. Has the internet brought us together or driven us apart? Okay, so for number one, the writer mentions talking to his nephew to show how much B, the internet has changed human communication. What's the example that he gives in the text? Yeah, he gave the example of when he was at university, how he contacted his friends and what was the, um, what did the, the nephew do? Oh, he was astonished. I can't believe it. It's so different. So the example was how he communicated at university. Number two then, what is the writer's attitude to free online news and music? This one is... C. Look at paragraph one, two, three, four. The final part of paragraph four. We will never know all the news stories that won't get written or the songs that will never be recorded. Number three then. What does it in line 29 refer to? So this one is the definition of it. As human beings, we're not very good at it. And it refers to concentrating on different matters at the same time. It refers back to the sentence, we live in a state of permanent partial attention where we are attempting to focus simultaneously on a whole range of things. Number four then, the writer uses the expression digital migrants in lines 32 33 to mean people who d never had the opportunity in their childhood to go online okay talks here the internet age um let's have a look so there are digital natives kids who were born in the internet age who look different to us digital migrants who came to it the internet as adults. We came to it as adults because it wasn't possible as children. Number five then, why according to the writer can an email anger people so easily? This one is D. The reader assumes the writer has given a lot of thought to it. Okay. Here it talks about you can't hear the tone of voice, so you read unfriendliness where there's none. And then it says, we read them with the same seriousness with which we take a letter. And finally, in number six, what point is the writer making in the final paragraph is C. People need the communication with others that the internet provides. It talks at the end of the paragraph about how lonely we would feel if this communication was cut off. How many did you get out of six? Six, I hope. Okay, well, that's the end of today's video class. All right, I will see you on Wednesday, where we'll continue with the book. I'm not going to give you any homework, but remember the CD from your book has a range of activities and exercises that you can use to practice. Okay, that's it. Bye guys and I'll see you on Wednesday.